Good morning and welcome to Fellowship Church. You've picked a great time to join us as the holidays are in full swing and we're only one week away from Christmas. Join us next Sunday at one of our three identical services to celebrate the season. We'll be spending our time together with beautiful music, a special story time for the kids, a relevant message of hope, and one of my personal favorites, a candlelit moment where we reflect on the joy and beauty of the season. This is a perfect time to bring a friend or family member. If you've ever attended one of our Christmas services, you have experienced just how special it is to celebrate the birth of Jesus with one another. I hope you'll prayerfully consider who you can share this experience with this coming weekend. We will have three family-friendly services at 10 a.m., 3.30, and 5 p.m., and our nursery will be open to those two and under. And for those planning ahead, we have one combined service the following week, New Year's Eve, at 10 a.m. Coming up Sunday, January 7th, after our second service, join us for Tailgate Sunday. This will be an afternoon of NFL football watching, pickleball, cornhole, ping pong, billards, and a chili cook-off. Enter your chili recipe into a contest that those who attend will vote on. Free childcare will be provided from 11.30 to 1.30. If you will be attending, please let us know by signing up on our website. From every baptism story, every student whose life was transformed, every new family that has attended, and every individual who came back to faith in Jesus, it was evident God was working. Still, I believe we're just getting started. Pastor Andy has shared lately about the big dreams we have to continue to reach people in our community and grow the faith of those inside our church. We want to continue the great work that we've started by using our Christmas offering to pay down our mortgage. This will allow our church to maintain our current operating budget and continue to do all the great things, life-changing things, we have done this year. We hope you'll join us in this important work. If you'd like to give to our Christmas offering, you can do so online by selecting Christmas offering. Your faithfulness and generosity to our church is so appreciated. That's it from me. We hope to see you back again next week for one of our special Christmas services. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Well, hey guys, depending on when you're listening to this, at the premiere of this video, at least, uh, we are one week until Christmas Eve. Anybody having an anxiety attack, feeling the pressure of all the things that have got to get done here this next week before Christmas? You know, sometimes all I want for Christmas is something besides that mile-long to-do list and the pressure to get everything done. And then there's, of course, the everyday other things of life as well, right? I mean, way too often we wake up and our first thoughts are, man, if only I could control my diet or my work or my kids or my dog or my body or age or my thoughts or my feelings or even my living space or my relationship or my life. And, oh, grocery prices, don't get me started. Maybe I could control gas prices or politics or wars and natural disaster. If I could do that, life would be so much easier. I'd feel so much better. Ever fall into that belief before? Sadly, the more we strive for control, the greater our stress and our, and our anxiety grows. And then we respond by trying to control that even more. And it's this unproductive cycle that continues. And you end up exhausting yourself and, of course, the people that are around you who love you the most. Now, the older I get, the more I'm learning how little I actually control. I mean, have you ever said hi to somebody, you know, and just said, hey, hello, and, and you wave at them only to have them just grumble and dismiss you? I mean, you can't control their reaction, yet you can be wounded by it, and it could ruin your day if you're not careful. I mean, part of parenting, right? It's learning how your kids try and control you through their actions and attitudes, and Wise parents learn to live above those tactics and parent with poise and purpose, and even though we're not perfect with it. But then our kids become adults, and we try to control them by our own antics and attitudes. But that doesn't work either, and we need to just allow some space and some freedom and for God to work. So today, as we continue our series, Yankee Swap, we want to dive into how we can swap our control for God's gift of joy. Yeah, the pathway to joy is by giving up control. Jesus said it so well. He says, and Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. 
But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. Guys, have you learned that you can't control the circumstances of life? But you can choose how you'll respond. And that makes all the difference. And this is beautifully illustrated by the response of Mary. After hearing that God had chosen her to bring the promised Messiah, the Savior, into the world. And she actually wrote a song, believe it or not. And Luke records this song in Luke 1. And beginning in verse 46, this is how it starts. She says this, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. There's the joy right there. Guys, Mary is in this vulnerable moment. A few days prior, she's told by an angel that she's having a baby as a virgin. I mean, the uncertainty and the emotion is high right now. And Mary thought her life was going to head down one path and she'd be this devout Jewish wife and mother and raise a nice family. And all of a sudden, no, it's not going to look anything like that. And so she does the unthinkable. She relinquishes control. I love her response when the angel told her all about this in Luke 1.38. She said, I am the Lord's servant and may everything you have said about me come true. You know, days later, her response is to praise God with this song and, and to be filled with joy and not anxiety and stress. You know, Mary knew that you can't control the circumstances of your life. But again, you can choose how you respond to them, and it makes all the difference. Guys, we have such a bad concept of surrender. You know, surrender isn't about giving up. It's really about giving in. And it's giving in to the one who knows best for us. The one who knows us most and has a good plan for our lives. Surrender is the only real way to experience his peace. It's the only real pathway to true joy. And if we'll just make an adjustment in our hearts, it can make all the difference in the joy of our lives. So if you haven't been feeling a lot of joy recently, check how you've been trying to control some things in your life. Look what she goes on to say. She says this, For he took notice of his lowly servant. She's talking about God. God took notice of his lowly servant. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. I mean, that's Mary's perception of herself. Initially, she's like, look, he took notice of me. I'm a nobody, yet God noticed me. You know, you might feel that way today. Uh, there could be circumstances in your life where you just feel like a nobody. But the truth is, God notices you. God takes notice of you when you feel that you haven't done enough or been enough when you feel overlooked or forgotten by others, when nobody's coming alongside you and you're lonely, God takes notice. And he not only sees you, but he cares about you. I mean, this idea of God noticing reminds me of the Old Testament priestly blessing. Uh, you can find it in number six. It says this, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. We can understand most of what's being said there, except that one statement, make his face shine upon you. You're like, you're like what does that mean? I, that, that, that phrase of words, it's kind of unique. What, what does God mean there? Well, think about grandparents. Uh, when a grandparent sees that granddaughter or that grandson, it's just all joy. And no responsibility, at least for most grandparents these days, not all. But I got a picture here of my wife, Laura, with our granddaughter, Nolly. And you can just see Laura, her face is just beaming and her face is shining, you know, upon little Nolly. You know, that grandparent's face just shines upon those grandkids. And they're, these grandkids, whether they know it or not, they are loved and they are valued, and not for anything they can do but just because of who they are. That's how God sees you. He takes delight and joy and satisfaction in you simply because you 
are you? Mary was a nobody, according to the world and culture of that day, but God took notice of her, and he takes notice of you still today. That's the pathway to joy, is understanding that and embracing that. You have his favor and his blessing and his protection. You have his peace and forgiveness and purpose. You have a family of faith through our local church here who walks with you. And God encourages you and he takes delight in you. And even when things are not going well, he can lift our, we can lift our heads to him. And when we lift our heads to him, we allow his face to shine upon us. And it lifts our life. See, God is ultimately, reliably, consistently, and attentively present in your life. And whenever he feels far away and distant, and that happens, it's not him who's distant. It's us. And so we're all trying to hang on too tightly to some things and trying to control the uncontrollables in our life. And guys, in that moment, we need to swap our control for the joy of being fully loved. I love that Mary also just put her full confidence in God. You know, I can't put my confidence in the state of my kids or family members or my job or anything like that. Circumstances can never be a strong foundation for my life. Those things are always changing all the time. You know, I have to believe that God knows what he's doing and, and it's all well in hand with him. And I love how Mary puts her trust in God's character and his actions. And we can do the same thing too. Listen to what she says here in her song. She says, for the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He's brought down princes from their thrones. And he's exalted the humble. He's filled the hungry with good things. And he's sent away the rich with empty hands. You know, she places her trust in the character and track record of God. Look at what she says about him. She says that he's holy, right? That there's nobody like him. There's none that can be compared to him. That he's set apart from all. He's bigger. He's better. He's wiser. He's more perfect than anyone. She recognizes his poise and his strength. God is mighty, she says. He's strong. He can handle anything in my life. No problems too big. No circumstances unsolvable. He can even bring dead things back to life. Our dead dreams, dead relationships, God can do this. We've seen Jesus. We know Jesus is risen from the dead. You know, God's not only holy and mighty, but he's also personal and approachable because he's merciful, she says. You know, I, you may not know this, but in the Old Testament, God introduces himself for the very first time. And when he does, he begins with the fact, his first words is that he is Yahweh, he is God, he is full of compassion, and he is merciful. That's what he leads with. That's what God is known for. You know, Mary knew that she could put her confidence in him because God is holy and he's mighty and he's merciful. She goes on to say that he's done great things for me. He notices, he lifts the humble. Uh, in, you know, in order to release control, we not only need to see the greatness and goodness of God, but we need to humble ourselves as the all-controllable ones, right? You know, humility is the pathway to joy. He, he fills the hungry, she says, so what is it that you're wondering will fill you these days and give you meaning and purpose? God says, I'll do that if you'll allow me. He allows you to see life beyond just your life. Guys, that's real joy. You know, Pastor Rick and his wife Kay Warren uh, define joy uh, this way. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. It's also the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And it is also the determined choice to praise God in every situation, to rejoice, to have joy. You know, Mary looks back and acknowledges the promises of God, and she believes that God, he can do it again. He is faithful to his promise. I love how she winds up her song by saying this, for he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. You know, Christmas 
isn't just about this moment of Jesus coming to the earth as he did thousands of years ago. It's about God being true to his word. God had a plan that lasted from way before to the time of even Abraham and before. And nothing stopped his plan. And at just the right time, he sent Jesus into the world just when the timing was right. The infrastructure of the world was in place. Transportation was built and roads connected country to country. Written words uh, were important for that day rather than just oral traditions. He fulfilled a promise long ago in sending his son into this world on that very first Christmas. And if he's done it before, he's doing it now and he can do it again. You know, Jesus' promise is that he will be with us forever. He promised he'll come back. And so no matter what you're trying to control the outcome of, you can rest assured that it's okay to give it to God because God's big enough to handle it. He's faithful to his promise. He'll not abandon or forget you. You can feel his face shine upon you. Well, how can I do this, you might ask? How can I give this over to God? Well, one practice might be this. You might find this helpful. Try reviewing your day with God. Every day, maybe on the way home from work or maybe after dinner when you have a quiet moment, um, just have this conversation with God and say, Jesus, you know, let him know. Today was a good day or a not so good day. And then tell him everything you did. Just review your day with him. But most of all, in that time, think of these two statements and make sure you don't miss these. Share with Jesus the moment, say, that you felt his presence was most clearly in your life. And then share with Jesus the moment that you felt you missed his presence in your life. And these moments of surrender that you have, these moments of relinquishing control in your life, and these are such important moments in your life. They're, th these are, they are, they're ways where God has an opportunity to love you. He loves you all the time, but for you to recognize his love for you. You know, think about it. To love somebody, they have to express some kind of need to be tended to, that you can tend to, right? To show your love for them. And how many of us don't express need to God because we have a need to control every situation and we're trying to handle it all? What if we allowed God an opportunity to do just that and to allow him to love and care and tend to our souls? You know, if you've never invited Jesus into your life to forgive you of your sins and lead you through your life, this could be your opportunity to do just that, to relinquish some control. You don't have to be the king or queen of your life anymore. Jesus is the king. He's the one true king. Remember the wise men searching for the king? They were looking for King Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, I can surrender and Jesus is such a good King that surrender equals joy. So walking with Jesus is about surrendering control and it's about trusting Jesus more and more. He's forgiven you. He's given you strength. He's given you hope and peace, and he'll do it again. He will see you through every dark night, even in the greatest of your difficulties. He's there when no one else is available. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. This Christmas, what if you swapped your control for God's joy?